Hey, Chaucer, how did the counterclockwise organization get started? You know, that's a story that goes back to the beginning of time. Time had a beginning? Indeed it did, Diana. Jeeves, let's start the show. The universe itself was created in an enormous explosion some 13.7 billion years ago. Before that explosion, there was no time, no space, no energy, and no matter. Right there in that first instant, time began. And space? Well, there was so much pure energy all of a sudden that space itself couldn't stand it. So from just about nothing, space zoomed faster than thought to an enormous size. Good thing, too, because gravity was about to squeeze that baby universe back into the nothingness it came from. That first zoom happened a whole lot faster than the speed of light and is called inflation. Since then, the universe has expanded at more of a pedestrian speed of light. At the incredible temperatures and energies of that first instant, nothing, not even matter, was stable. And as quick as it could form, it turned back into pure energy. But as the universe expanded, it cooled. And gradually, the basic pieces of normal matter were formed from that incredible energy. Quarks were the first particles to form. Today, quarks only exist in tightly bound groups. But back then, space was so small and quarks were squeezed so close together that they were not bound to other specific quarks. The colors of these quarks just represent a property that attracts them to one another. There are two kinds of quarks in normal matter. Physicists call them flavors of quarks. There's the up quark and the down quark. As space got bigger, quarks lost their freedom and found themselves locked into groups of three inside a proton or a neutron. A proton is formed from two up quarks and one down quark while its slightly heavier cousin, the neutron, is composed of two down quarks and one up quark. Just about every proton and every neutron in existence today was formed at the time of inflation and was crammed into that primordial basketball. At this point, every neutron was in a desperate race for its life. Since neutrons can only exist for about 20 minutes on their own, every neutron either decayed or got together with a proton to form a kind of hydrogen. Or two neutrons got together with two protons to form the nucleus of helium. All of this happened within the very first minute of existence of the baby universe. Electrons were the final basic particles to freeze out of the energy suit. But the energy density was still way too high for electrons to join together with other particles. And the early universe remained a glowing, cloudy plasma. This condition lasted about 300,000 years while the universe grew and cooled. Finally, it was cool enough for the electrons to be captured by hydrogen and helium nuclei. And the first atoms were formed. Suddenly, light could race through the universe without bumping into charged particles. And the universe became transparent and dark, filled mostly with clouds of hydrogen and helium gas. The light released at that time is still visible today as cosmic microwave background. So how did an almost perfectly dark and smooth universe become littered with stars? Inflation itself caused the first tiny ripples in the density of matter. And over a period of about 10 million years, matter increasingly gathered at these denser locations. After 100 million years, the center of each cloud evolved into a star as massive as 100 suns. Across the universe, these first-generation stars lit their furnaces as their cores became hot and dense enough for nuclear fusion.
the universe emerged from the Dark Ages. Because of their huge sizes, these first stars burned with a frenzy and converted their supplies of hydrogen and helium fuel into the first heavy elements. Essentially, all the atoms in the universe heavier than helium were born in the hearts of stars. In a short three million years, the fuel was spent, and these first stars collapsed and exploded into supernovas, spewing their newborn heavy elements out into the universe. This new composition of heavier elements made it a lot easier for gravity to squeeze these clouds of matter into new generations of stars. It took another 500 million years for gravity to do its work on these new mixtures of hydrogen, helium, and heavier elements. Thousands and millions of second generation stars were born from these clouds. Small groups of these new stars were drawn to each other gravitationally and merged to form ever larger and larger groups. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is an example of a spiral galaxy born in this early era. Today it contains about 200 billion stars and it is still growing as it absorbs small neighboring clusters of stars. The center of our galaxy is a raging dynamo of tremendous power. And it's natural to wonder what could provide such awesome energies. Black holes. When a large star is nearing the end of its life, it can collapse under the pressure of its own gravity and become a black hole. These weird bodies are called black holes because they swallow everything that comes close enough, even light itself. The process, though, is anything but dark and serene. This is a photo taken by the Chandra telescope showing stars near the center of our galaxy radiating fiercely as they speed towards their death under the pull of black holes. They are traveling at millions of miles per hour and are being torn apart in the process. There are millions of black holes in our galaxy, and the biggest of them all is the one at the center. This monster has the mass of three million suns. Its appetite is ferocious and it swallows everything in its neighborhood, even other black holes. Probably every large galaxy in the universe has a monster black hole at its center. Until recently, we thought that galaxies were the largest structures in the universe and that they were pretty evenly distributed. But now we recognize that galaxies join together to form clusters, superclusters, walls, and filament shapes. The Milky Way is a member of a group of 20 or 30 galaxies and star clusters called our local group. The largest galaxy in this group is our sister spiral galaxy, Andromeda. Larger groups called superclusters may contain thousands of galaxies. The nearest of these is the Virgo supercluster, towards which we are being inexorably drawn. Can you feel the tug? This is a map of all the clusters and superclusters within a billion light years of Earth. Represented here are some 200 million galaxies, and this is still less than one thousandth of the known universe. From small beginnings, the universe has prospered. Four point six billion years ago, our solar system started to form about two thirds of the way out on one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way. Our sun and its planets condensed under the pressure of gravity until the sun was hot and dense enough to light its own nuclear fires. The inner planets are small and rocky with heavy elements, while the outer planets tend to be large gas giants. Our sun is an average-sized star, but it dwarfs the planets. Earth is the tiny planet third from the left. While it would take light itself over six hours to travel from the sun to Pluto, 
let's take a quick tour of our solar system. The planet Mercury is the closest to the Sun. Followed next by our sister planet, Venus. Our own Earth is third. Our neighbor, Mars. Jupiter is the first and largest of the gas giants. Followed by Saturn with its glorious rings. Uranus rolls on its side. Neptune is a blue world. Followed last by ex-planet Pluto. And even traveling at the speed of light, it would take us more than four years to get to the nearest star. All very interesting, Chaucer. But what has all that to do with the counterclockwise organization? You know, that's a story that goes back to the beginning of time. Time had a beginning? Deja vu all over again. Now I think you guys are pulling my leg. That's another story that goes back to the beginning of time. <laughs> Enough. I am out of here. <laughs>